Wando, I'm Valerie Hewen. And I'm Alex Bavosa, and welcome to this week's episode of Tribe Talk. This week we focus on Black History Month, the new Costco, and this week's Warrior Spotlight. the Port of Charleston came in as the sixth most productive port in the nation, with $75 billion of import and export revenue. Although the port manages to stay busy, cargo ships are forced to wait to enter and exit the port because of the shallow depth of the Charleston Harbor. New dredging plans are being put into place to diminish these complications, but how will these new plans affect the economy and the environment? Starting this month, Charleston Harbor will begin a dredging project that will make the Port of Charleston the deepest port on the East Coast. This project will have many implications, including impacts on the local economy and the local job market. Dredging Charleston Harbor will take the, the nominal depth of the harbor from 45 feet to 52 feet. And the, the largest ships carrying containers around the world can load up to as deep as 50 feet. So with, with the deepening project, we'll be able to handle these ships that we rely on to bring goods to us and to bring our products elsewhere in the world to trade in and out of Charleston, fully loaded, and they can do that 24 hours a day, which is essential to the efficiency of the port. And right now, we're confined to high tide for the largest ships when they're fully loaded. And as, as the economy grows, at the rate it's growing, that's just going to be unsustainable without a deeper harbor. The dredging project goes beyond the ports, affecting local businesses as well as the local job market. Uh, what I do is uh, I'm part of the port dredge community. so. The company I have, um, we go in and out of the port, we contract with drivers to pick up the containers, either make deliveries or pickups at customers that bring the, the cargo back to the port. Uh, it's going to provide a lot more opportunities, particularly in, in regards to employment um, and, and continuing to increase rates and hourly uh, or, or salaries to drivers as well. Uh, it's it's going to hurt before it gets better, and by that I mean it's going to it's going to create a spike that's needed from a capacity to pull the containers in and out of the port. Uh, and like I said, we're, we're already uh, over capacity now, meaning that there's more work than there are drivers. So over the next three to four years, you know, while this project is ongoing, it's gonna require everybody uh, getting together to figure out a way to be able to bring more drivers to the market, um, which means increasing rates, which is a good thing for everybody, uh, which will increase uh, rates to, uh, to drivers as well. So it, it'll, it'll hurt a little bit, but overall, a, um, uh, economic standpoint, it's going to be a huge windfall for Charleston. This has been Sydney Register reporting for Tribe Talk. With many tragic events occurring across the nation, kindness is appreciated more now than ever. A guidance counselor here at Wando has decided to create a week of kindness to show that being nice to anyone can greatly impact another person's life. I am the coordinator of our PBIS program. Uh, PBIS is Positive Behavior Interventions and Support. Uh, and as a group, we decided to uh, kick off our PBIS implementation with this Kindness Week. So the purpose of Kindness Week is to try and combat social isolation among students and to kind of foster a culture of connection among the students and faculty. Freshmen are a bright, you know, brand new light at the school, um, and we want them to feel connected to one another here. We are a big school, so sometimes we have to reach out a little harder than other schools might have to, to foster that sense of connection. As I kick off, I'll do a kindness week to show some positive behaviors amongst all of our kids uh, and help these kids who are isolated out. Along with Kindness Week, an assortment of activities will be available to the students. We have a lot of things set up throughout the week, Monday through Friday. Um, there are things during lunch, they come down to the bistro, um, and there are lots of kids in there, you know, to greet them. If you you know, don't have anybody to sit with that lunch or just want to meet new friends. Students can write positive words of affirmation to their teachers and teachers can do uh, vice versa. We have a couple of activities where the students can buy uh, each other, buy each teacher a snack just out of kindness. So there's a lot of activities where the students, teachers, and other staff members kind of interact with each other in a kind way. A lesson will be taught in all freshman English classes about the importance of kindness during the week. So the English teachers will be teaching a lesson uh, on kindness and they have a prescribed uh, lesson plan that is developed through our uh, guidance department, uh, which I believe comes from some national model. Uh, and so those teachers will be uh, using that lesson on kindness 
uh, to uh, share with the kids? So I think we'll see how it goes. Um, I, my hope is that students and faculty will enjoy this week and that we might, you know, if we just foster a few new friendships, then it'll be worth all the work that we put into it. Um, if students and faculty are on board and it goes well, I don't see why we couldn't do it across the school next year. This has been Davina Patel reporting for Tribe Talk. Every February, people from all over the world come together to celebrate the achievements of African Americans. Black History Month highlights not just the well-known figures, but also the lesser-known individuals. Black History Month is every February, and it's like a celebration of our history and contribution that African Americans made throughout our history, that we can see how far we've come and how much more still we need to go. It enables us to know a part of history that is not necessarily taught or discussed or uh, predominant in our culture. So many people don't know the things that we have invented or was the first to discover, and so we want to share that with everyone. I think it's important that everybody gets to like know the figures that we aren't just learned in school, like Rosa Parks and um, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. We need to learn more people who have made such a drastic effect in our society. You know, some people who were teachers on the front lines. We need to celebrate all of them, and, and certainly individually, uh, through our local reach. Um, Wanda High School allow me to put on this program so that I can involve students. I really enjoy like what Wanda is doing here, how we have uh, in the PAC, we have like a rally and we get to celebrate with everybody. I invite students to participate, all students. And um, it's about singing. You know, our base is um, spiritual. And so we get into singing and um, quoting quotes from famous leaders. Normally, I don't tell anyone anything about the Black History Month program. I want them to come and be very surprised. And when they leave, I want them to be very happy. This has been Lori Harvey reporting for Tribe Talk. There are two keys to surfing, good waves and a good board. Now Charleston's surrounding beaches don't have the best waves throughout the year, but a good board can definitely enhance your experience. One of Wando's very own marine science teachers builds customized boards to fit the low country waves perfectly. Last spring break, I was down on Folly, um, surfing with my best bud, who also lives here. And um, we went into McEvelyn's because I was in the market for a longboard. And uh, the boards are about $1,100, which is way out of my price range. But sitting there up on one of the shelves was this beautiful longboard blank. And in a moment of clarity and machismo, I told myself that I could shape a longboard and have it look amazing. And it ended up not looking good at all. From there, once I got a lot of the materials, um, I knew that I could do so much better on a second board. Uh, it was a, a very steep learning curve, but I knew that everything that I messed up with on the first board, I could do better on the second. I like the idea of making surfboards because you can sort of tailor things to what you want. Having surfed in, in South Carolina for a while, you kind of get an idea of what the waves do and what may work well. Uh, Deadlog surfboards. Um, I sell all types of surfboards at a very discounted rate because I'm still trying to get better at it. Um, I'm not saying I'm anywhere near what people are selling these boards for, you know, the pros are actually doing it. This is just sort of a, a hobby of mine that I'm trying to make a little bit of money for. So right now I'm selling boards just above the cost of materials um, in order to get better. It may get kind of dusty in here. I, I'd say the pursuit of any hobbies or passion um, is just an astounding thing and if students wanted to get into it um, have a space to do it be prepared to get really messy covered in styrofoam maybe fiberglass um, but creating creating something that you can then take out in the water and, and surf on and, and show your friends is a really cool thing there are currently plans to build a new Costco here in the Carolina Park area Many people are excited about the new convenient location, while others are concerned about the Costco's potential impact on traffic patterns. If you drive by um, now, you'll see where they started 
construction. It's on the corner of Park Avenue Boulevard and Faison Road there. We expect the majority of people will use Faison Road to access the shopping center. So we don't expect it to have a big impact on the traffic on Carolina Park Boulevard. I think that the new Costco location in Mount Pleasant will have a very negative effect on traffic. We already have compounding traffic problems as it is. The operations, you know, Wando School starts early in the morning and Costco, I don't think they open until 10 a.m., which is a little after all the Wando students arrive, so there wouldn't be much overlap there. There could be some overlap in the afternoons. My family and I only shop at the location in West Ashley a few times a year which makes it not as big of an inconvenience when it comes to the drive. The feedback's been overwhelmingly positive. I think a lot of people are looking forward not, not to have to drive over to West Ashley. The new construction, it's not necessary, but it's like not a problem, but it's a good close place to get groceries and shop. We're making a number of improvements, and one of those is a traffic signal at Highway 17 and Faison Road. And then in addition to that, we'll be installing some turn lanes on Faison into Costco's site, as well as and turn lanes down to Highway 17 and phase on. I think that putting a stoplight at the intersection will cause backups, but I think that it will overall be beneficial. It will give people a sense of direction of which way they're supposed to go, which will overall calm traffic instead of having people turn at intersections or go when they weren't supposed to. I think it will help because there isn't a light there right now. And if there's not a light, then it's going to create accidents. I think that the opinions on the build of the new Costco will differ according to who you ask. If you live in the surrounding areas of the location, like the Carolina Park and Park West neighborhoods, I think that overall you'll find it harmful because it will make the ease of getting in and out of your neighborhood much more difficult. If you live further away from the location and you think that driving to West Ashley is an inconvenience, then overall the new location will be a positive thing to add to your life. This has been Charlotte Marshall reporting for Tribe Talk. Welcome back to Cinema Chit Chat. I'm your host, Ellie Deputy, and we're on the red carpet for the Oscars. We have two Oscar enthusiasts with us today, and they're going to be telling us their top picks for the Oscars. What is your top picks for the Oscars? Well, my best actress award has to go to Frances McDormand for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and my best actor award has to go to Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out. Get Out is also my favorite film of the year. I thought that it blended horror and comedy perfectly together. That was a great film for a first time director. What is your top picks for the Oscars? My top picks have to be Margot Robbie from I, Tanya, Gary Oldman as his portrayal of Winston Churchill in The Darkest Hour, and for best picture, it's got to be three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. It gave a great narrative, great cinematography, it had very dynamic characters, and it showed the real human nature. And that's a wrap on Cinema Chit Chat. Here is a sneak peek of your 2018 Miss Wanda contestants. On Friday, March 23rd, an event called Rebound will be broadcast to Wando, which focuses on a high school basketball legend named Chris Heron from Massachusetts. Heron scored over 2,000 career points and was named to the 1994 McDonald's All-American team. Heron realized his lifelong dream of playing in the NBA, only to lose it all to the nightmare of drug addiction. Having been abstained from alcohol and drugs since August 1st, 2008, he has refocused his life to put his sobriety and family above all else. Through his memoir, Basketball Junkie, he tells the story of abuse and recovery. In witnessing this event, junior classes will be invited to the PAC, while the rest of the school will watch it in their second block classrooms. Make sure to follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram to stay tuned with this event. For many, many years, smoking cigarettes was widely accepted. But scientists have done research, and the results are eye-opening, and now businesses in public areas have made the cigarettes obsolete. But the addictive traits in tobacco have made it hard for users to put down, so they've switched to alternatives like vaporizers. Those alternatives are being studied for similar risks and are being debated if they should even be taken out of all businesses. Recently, the South Carolina Supreme Court has put a new smoking ban into place. 
prohibiting the use of e-cigarettes and cigarettes in public places under the Clean Indoor Air Act. With this new ban into place, we take a look at how it affects the Mount Pleasant community. Disclaimer, Wando High School's Tripoc does not condone any use of e-cigarettes or cigarettes. I think that it's beneficial potentially for indoor air quality. I think that it's more beneficial in a lot of ways for people that just don't want to be around vaping or smoking. I think it's a great idea, uh, especially in the workplace. Um, I think it's a great idea because those that do smoke, when they do smoke, they go outside, they take 10-15 minutes and they're still getting paid. We believe that it's good to have an indoor smoke ban. Um, Vaping is obviously not equal to cigarettes, but we don't believe that you should be vaping indoors because it could be annoying or harmful to other people. You have friends or somebody that smokes and they smell and they stink like cigarettes and stuff like that. And then also the secondhand smoke, which is really bad. Um, not just for uh, the person smoking, but for those around you. So by minimizing the smoking and doing the ban, it is especially good for those around uh, those that smoke. I think we're already seeing smoking traditional cigarettes dying out because of all the harmful chemicals in them. But there has always been a problem with high school students and nicotine use. We personally cannot sell to anyone under 18. Um, that's a federal law. But we, do, we have seen an increase in the use of vaping with 18-year-olds. We encourage everyone not to form a nicotine habit if they don't already have one. Unfortunately, we still have students that bring the jewels and cigarettes and stuff from off campus and bring them into school, which is illegal and it's against the rules. Smoking is bad for you, plain and simple. The laws are what they are, and we encourage people to follow them. This has been Matthew Montgomery reporting for Tribe Talk. The influenza virus has been rapidly spreading through the Charleston area for weeks now. We take a look at the truth behind vaccinations and how to prevent the dangerous illness. So some easy ways to help prevent the flu, prevent transmission would be uh, hand washing, covering your cough when you're in a closed environment with other persons, avoiding those who have been diagnosed with the flu, and assuring those who have been diagnosed with the flu are getting the right treatment and care. If you have been diagnosed with influenza, you should avoid all contact as much as possible. I highly suggest not being in public with influenza and uh, you should ask your provider or your health care provider for a, a, a medical excuse from your activities. We like everyone to be proactive. So when it's time for the flu shot, get your flu shot. Flu shot doesn't hurt and it doesn't cause you to have the flu. So if you suspect that you have a fever, you need to come to the clinic. I went to the doctor to get Tamiflu, the flu medication, but then I was allergic to that, so all I could really do was drink a lot of water and sleep. There are no other medications currently that we use uh, approved by the FDA aside from Tamiflu. There are some holistic remedies that have been identified. Uh, elderberry is one of them, maintaining hydration, and uh, I prefer just, just water hydration. Some of my friends, they say that the only time that they've ever gotten the flu was when they got the flu shot, but I've gotten the flu, I've gotten the flu shot every single year, and this is the only year that I've gotten the flu. Uh, getting the influenza vaccine can makes, make one feel a bit rough, can almost feel like the flu, but it is not. Regardless of those feelings and symptoms, getting the influenza vaccine is much, much better than contracting influenza itself. What we have to remember is that every year that the influenza comes around, we're always dealing with a vaccine that is prepared from last year's outbreak. So we're hedging our bets to a degree. These be taken seriously, and those who do have the flu need to listen to their physician, follow proper procedures, take the medication provided, and improve their health. This has been Valerie Hewen reporting for Tribe Talk. In one year, roughly 260 million tons of plastic is produced, and about 10% of that ends up in our oceans. This affects everything, including sea life, the ecosystem, and eventually the economy. Wando is working to implement a new recycling system to reduce waste and decrease that percentage. Recycling is a huge part of cleaning up the environment here in the Low Country. Teachers here at Wando have been striving to make recycling an important aspect of student life. Wando has an opportunity to be a model for Mount Pleasant. Uh, here on campus, there's a lot of garbage cans that don't have a recycling option next to them and that's really what should happen is that you should not never see a garbage can without a recycling can next to it. Well recycling is important for a number of reasons. Um, the main reason is, is that it keeps that product out of our landfills and that's one of our limiting factors. We don't have landfills 
everywhere and I'm sure people don't want to have more landfills. Well, the more waste we can divert from the landfill and recycle, uh, the less new natural resources we have to extract, so it's better for the environment. The plans for the new recycling program at Wando are just to have teachers empty the small square bins into the larger rolling bins that are going to be located in the hallway. And right now we're waiting for more large rolling bins. And what we want is for teachers to, every few days or whenever they want to, empty the bins into the large rolling bins and we are working with service solutions with the day porters and the night porters to empty those bins or to roll them out into the larger staging area and then roll in empty bins although teachers don't have to worry about that the only thing that we need teachers to do is to monitor what goes in the bin and to periodically empty the square bins into the large blue rolling bins that are in the hallway there's a few teachers at Wanda who've been working on revamping the recycling program and I know that a lot of information has not gone out yet but we are waiting for certain things to happen through the county before we really make this big push to recycle more. This has been Francis Fallen reporting for Trap Talk. So I started rapping, or not rapping, but I started writing probably in like middle school, just like dabbling with it. I didn't really like seriously commit to it until like high school, but I just like, just like coming up with like metaphors, like things that people like haven't heard before, or just like interesting concepts. I had uh, accounting together, and uh, him and his buddy were sitting over there, they set like two computers down for me and they were like listening to some music and like talking about the lyrics and stuff and so I went down there and I was like hey I record um, you should come over sometime and so yeah he just came over one day and we just started working on stuff. I guess really I've kind of grown up on music it's been like the most consistent interest in my whole life like my dad's a musician grandparents did it like we're in choir in college and stuff like that so they kind of dragged me into it my dad kind of pushed it and supported it so the full song process would be we, we would find a beat or make a beat and then Declan would start with either a hook or like a chorus and uh, kind of build on that with a basic idea uh, this is Diamond Boulevard Productions and my buddy Connor started it. It's actually working to be an official business, with like actual like employees and like videographers, and hopefully be something bigger than that eventually. I think I think Plan D can go big places. Honestly, you know he, he's he's one of the best I've heard. That's not not trying to be biased, but I think I think he's going to go somewhere big. Big being stationed in Atlanta somewhere just kind of like having our own buzz, being independent, multiple projects, more people, bigger, better things. This has been Alex Bavosa reporting. Hold on, I got another, gone to another home. Mars, I'm in a rover, he's hard and now they know it. It started, closed, open, strong, I'm not home. Wando. Here, excellence is standard. For us, sports are more than just a hobby. They are our passion and our purpose. We are driven by the success of those before us, because here, championships are expected, and winning is in our blood. We are Wando, and we are warriors. Hey Wando, I'm Ellie Grace Goodwin. And I'm Kellen Noonan. Welcome to this segment of Sports Talk. With the start of the new spring season comes with an end to a very eventful winter season. The girls and boys basketball teams finished their seasons this month, with both teams reaching the first round of the playoffs. Congratulations to both teams. The girls basketball team is losing a critical group of seniors this year, with two of their players continuing their careers in college. We asked both coaches and players about their views on the season, the returning athletes, and the upcoming season.
During high school athletics, I have learned what it's like to have a family or like a real team of sisters, and it just is awesome knowing that you have a group of girls that will do anything for you. Uh, the loss of senior class will impact us uh, a great deal because every time you lose a senior class, you lose your leadership. So um, now it's on the younger group to take up that slack and, and, and build from it their own way. So it gives the, them the opportunity as well to grow as a group within themselves. Um, you know, when you lose your seniors, most of the time you lose a lot of your scoring, your rebounding, and you, you know, they get more playing time on a whole, on a regular, on a regular basis, on a normal basis. But it gives the younger kids a chance to step into that role and to grow throughout themselves as well. Out of everything in Mondo, High school basketball, I'm going to miss the team the most. They just mean so much to me, and it's going to be really sad to leave them when I graduate. We had a lot of young players on our varsity team this year, so you know, basically half of the team could have played JV legally, uh, which means we're in good shape for the future. So I'm looking forward to working with that group uh, coming up as well, and I hope that they learn a lot this year that will carry over to next year. Advice to future and younger Wando girls basketball players is just keep working hard and set your mind to some goals and I know you can achieve them. Stay close with your team and don't take any time for granted because it's going to be over before you know. I know you guys are going to do great things. An exciting spring season is underway for the lacrosse, soccer, golf, track, and tennis teams. Last year, boys soccer, boys lacrosse, and girls track all won state championships. With these expectations in place, we're excited to see how the new seasons will play out. So good luck to all the spring sports teams, and thanks for tuning in, Wando. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Sports Talk WHS. This is Benelli Grace Goodwin. And Kelly Noon, reporting for Sports Talk. Thanks for watching, Wando. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Snapchat at Tribe Talk WHS, and stay tuned for Tribe Talk Presents. This has been Valerie Hewen. And Alex Mavosa, signing off. One, two, three. Myra and I were um, at a basketball game and we were just like joking around, making steps and doing chants and making beats and stuff in the stands. And somebody was like, wow, you guys are good. Like, you should start a dance team. Now. it's more like a family and they're more outgoing and they're actually better. I mean you can tell in the way that they step that they love what they do.